Oi, oi. In tonight's show, what I want to do is I want to give you a quick tour and a quick chat about some of the uh, mega MFTs. This was the very first one I started to use of Mega. This is the 1553, and this is the, my very brand new one, the MFT 1741 Plus. And this is the one I'm going to look at. It's only going to be a quick guide of uh, all the bits and bobs that it's got into it. So we're going to get into it. So if we roll the beats. Good evening fellow Groove Riders, Will from Wheels Electrical Services, also known as the Mirfield General. In tonight's episode, what I want to do is I want to give you a quick guide of some of my mega MFT testers. Well, when I say quick guide, I'm really only going to really focus on this one, this, the, my brand new one. This is a 1741 Plus, and I just got me other, a really old one. This wasn't, this is obviously my, my own very first personal one, but when I uh, first ever started doing testing, this was the first first meter I ever used. When I was, the uh, well, first company I worked for, when I used to help out the testers on there, they used to have the free pack robins, you know, with all the different uh, components. But obviously, oh, technology and all that, they've got all three of those into one of these uh, meters now, and the multifunctional testers. So I'll give you a quick guide. I must say, there is some other really good guides on there. John Ward's got a very good guide, and he goes through every, every simple, uh, demonstration and everything like this but this is a light-hearted guide because you know I, I, I just only feel comfortable showing you so much but I thought it was quite handy because I was actually watching a really good video of uh, is it Dr Electrics and all that and he was at the Elect show and he was talking to one of the, a guy on there about their Q-Tech testers and all that and I was quite interested and I thought oh this made quite a good video I'll see what you think you know what I mean so I'll give you a quick guide like obviously this is the 1741 so my other two testers are the 1720s which are, are very similar to these but you can't you know there is uh, one of the main differences with this is that it's rechargeable which I was always a bit skeptical about because you know, I didn't like the top range. I'm a bit old fashioned with that. I don't really like rechargeable batteries. You know, I always think if it's going to leak, it's going to wipe out. Like, I think this cost me over 1200 quid. I know it's a nightmare, but this 1741 does actually have the cas uh, capabilities to do the EV charge. And I thought just because where well, we took on a new geezer and we need enough a meter, I thought it was pretty pointless buying enough for 1720 because we've got two of them already. I thought we might as well go for this one because inevitably soon we're going to, you know, with the condition reports, we're going to have to start including the EV chargers and all that. But I'll give you a quick tour of it. So what it has got, I will keep uh, putting photos up close to it, but I don't want to show you too, you know, too much. I'm not going to demonstrate. I'm just literally going to show you the the uh, the uh, the actual uh, meter. One of the good things I do like about it is, unlike the QTEC, like I was just mentioned about that other video, is that you don't have to change the leads. You know, the leads always. You know, you've got the uh, L1, L2, L3. So live, live earth and neutral, you know, so, so to speak, or plus and minus. It does have, it is really nicely well labeled there. One of the good things is, one of the first features it's got, so basically what you've got is you've got two dials and basically this one's mainly the primary one and this is the secondary one. So this one, the first one, which is black, which is all color coded. And the good thing is with the color coded on, the, on this, this side, coincides with the uh, right hand ones as well to make it a little bit more simple. There is bits and bobs on there that I haven't got a clue, but you know, I'll hold my hands up to that, you know what I mean? But also what I was saying, which I did notice on John Ward's video is uh, that I went through it, is that where it's got the rechargeable batteries, where I think these are the, uh, you put lithium ones in there, they're a different voltage to the uh, actual rechargeable ones. So you do actually have to change that in a function, which I probably won't do, because I'm already, already gonna charge that. What we, me and Ollie have noticed in the, the month we've had it is that the actual charge and the battery is proper last ages even with insulation resistance but we haven't done much dead testing you know what i mean we're not really got many jobs on the first fix sort of stage at the moment where we need to do that but jump back on to it quickly to so the first ones the voltage where obviously you've got the live like the free phase there so you can actually check the phase rotation then you've got the orange there where you've got the uh, continuity you know the low ohms reader there so obviously you've got the test button there you've got the null button there so you can null it you can over null it as well you know which was i was funny enough chatting to with my nrc assessor about it the other day this one insulation resistance well, I think that's a new one to compare to my other one is that this has actually got 100 volts, 250 volts, 500, 
uh, one kV. You know, I've got to be honest. We always do it at 250. So if you know if there is anything plugged in or anything like that that you know it can't be damaged, that's another good one. And then we go straight on to this first one where it's actually got you've got the earth loop impedance. You've got the line line and earth there. So that's what you're using mainly for all your earth loop impedance. What also you have got is see the top there where it's got free low, which it automatically goes onto that. You can change that to too high. So obviously if you're doing the main source coming in, you can use that, it's a lot quicker. And then you've got the too low. The too low is absolutely awesome because especially as I keep bleating on about with the uh, uh, commercial testing and all that, if you've got like, uh, if you've got really high ceilings and all that, or you know, if you've got the Rattler, the train up to like uh, London to do testing, it can't take steps, then obviously you've got to do the earth loop at the switches. I just put it down as a limitation. It is what it is, you know, if you're not doing it, you can only record what you're doing. And then also, which is another good feature for this earth loop impedance, and this is the first time where we go over to this side, is that you've got, you've obviously got the, uh, You've got the normal one for the which you keep that on the time. But if you're doing like uh, if you're testing loads of circuit, doing loads of loop on the same circuit like uh, sockets you do, you can actually turn that to maximum, and then it stores automatically stores the highest. You know, so if you do 20, it just stores the highest, which I think is a really handy function. That isn't new to this meter. That is new to the 1700 range, I believe. Anyway, which is really good. And going back also, if you've got that phase uh, neutral. Is that when you take a when you take a, a loop impedance test and all it automatically gives you the perspective fault current or the you know the current reading at the top. Obviously, you know you've got to disconnect the earths and all that, but we're not covering that on this video. You know what I mean? We're just going quickly going through it. Obviously, these two here, this brown one, is to do with the earth earth electrode and all that. I've got to be honest, that's probably my weakest point. But I was chatting to uh, Paul on E5 on a live uh, video, and he said that he was going to do some. Uh, 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 fully, uh, he was going to do some uh, testing with all that, and I've and I've asked him if I can go, you know, go along for the day and uh, you know have a look, see what he's done, because I've actually done none of it. If we have anywhere that's got earth loop, uh, earth electrode, I just literally do the, the the R1, R2s, and then do the loops, and then record it in the limitations. It is what it is. If I can't do it, I can't do it. You know, obviously we live there as well. So you've got the earth uh, leakage meter as well, but that's an attachment. And I was speaking to Lee Baker about that, you know, because I've got so many, so many of them. I thought they'd rather buy the uh, earth leakage meter, which I've done a video up there. I'll just uh, do that. But yeah, and he said that they've sold hardly any of them. And these are the, and the next bit, which I'm going to show you, is, is the awesome part of, of this, this meter as well. Right, obviously, if you put this dial on here, on say that's on yellow on times half, then because it's the, the right hand dial is not on there, it comes up with error. Can be a bit painful because it always beeps at you for no reason. But then, yeah, what it's got is that uh, so on the primary one, you've got half, you've got times one, times five, because obviously times five, they don't really ask for it now. It's, uh, is it additional or is it full protection? I always get it the wrong way around, you know. Let's be fair, it's about minus one in here. It's absolutely freezing. Even my poor old dog bowl, I left it out here and it's uh, had ice over it, but yeah. So you've got times half, five, auto and ramp as well. And then obviously on this side, you've got 10, 30, 100. 300, 500 EV. So EV, I think that's where it starts going into, automatically goes into the B type RCD as well, because obviously you've got your little symbol there. There's loads of things you could do with this. You've obviously got the AC, DC, uh, sorry, you've got the A type, the AC type, the B type. You just got to, you know, go through them, hold it on, goes there. Automatically got a backlit uh, thing as well. It's also got a variable, so you can actually literally go up to, uh, you can literally go up to anything on that, you know, like uh, for the milliamps, I think it goes all the way up to a thousand, you know, which I don't know what you can use that for. Got the spanner there as well. That's also because that was another thing that I mentioned on one of the other videos is that uh, because with these, you can actually have it on auto test. So as soon as you put it on a live terminals, it automatically tests, which we always have it on, but it comes with it not on. You have to press the test button on, on the leads as well, which is a bit of a pain. But going back to the RCDs, you know, 
with all the different types as, as well. Because well, another thing, good thing I see on one of, uh, I think it was eFix's videos, like with the A-type breakers, is that I didn't realise with the A-type breakers is that you still actually have to, uh, you still have to, have to test the RCD on AC as well because of obviously. Um, Oh, I forget what they were saying now if it's to do with fault protection or additional. It was one of those, I forget. I'm I'm absolutely freezing. But enough of good feature about these meters, which I really do like as well, is that it's uh, the ramp check, which I didn't realise that this isn't a feature on all the other meters as well, because a lot of my friends call me up who have got these, and they don't even know this is a feature. So obviously, say for instance, you've got a 30 milliamp RCD, and you get a nuisance trip and all. If you test that on the ramp check, most of the time, I did see on Joe Robinson that he mentioned on a video that uh, if it's up to five like five milliamps then it should be replaced and all that and I've got to be honest I don't think I've ever seen a 30 milliamp that doesn't trip uh, like a uh, lot like about I think the highest is probably about 24 25 I think you know most of them about tw in the low 20s but yeah be interested to know if you've seen it also got a touch button here so obviously if you're doing a uh, testing for uh, touch current and all that you can put that there and put it on I've never seen that I've absolutely stolen that off John Ward I don't know if that's actually a thing I only watched the video yesterday to you know to see if there was anything else in there and also up here the blue bits this is all for the Bluetooth for the recording and all that sort of stuff but I don't get involved in any of that absolute beautiful bit of kit and just I don't know if I mentioned it on the earth loop page as where it's got line to line and line to neutral that is obviously for the free phase and you've obviously got the terminals there for the free phase that bit there is for the plug-in if you notice it all the uh, 15 ones it's got the very similar attachment to that which is really nice and that slider there is where you plug in the uh, 12 volt thing uh, the charger for that and it's absolutely beautiful you know beautiful bit of kit very expensive but as i say you know it is awesome you know like the earth loop impedance is a lot quicker than it used to be that was my only flaw because fluke used to smash it with the uh, uh you know waiting for the earth loop impedance but yeah it's better but the two wire l earth loop impedance is priceless because with those ones you know when you used to have it you used to sometimes you know this was before the rcd you'd put you have to put the neutral and the earth prong together wouldn't you and uh, to get the reading but you know it's one way around it probably maybe not the, the best way of doing it but anyway i hope you like the video and I've obviously forgot to do it again, but if you could like, subscribe, and turn the notification bell on because I'm getting hypothermia doing this video. But yeah, I hope you've got something out of the video. And don't forget, if you're gonna be anything this week, then be electric. Up the old village, you know. See you later, thanks for watching.